Hey, Chris here from the CompulsiveCanadianGamer.com. So today we're here with, to do an AV uh, review and unbox. Maybe not a review, but more of a discussion at this point. Uh, the review will come later on the website of uh, the Marantz 8805. Now this thing came out in the spring and any of you uh, who've tuned into my site um, in the last year, uh, it was around November of last year, I upgraded to an 8802. So I needed to do that for uh, some 4K uh, issues that I was having and whatnot and didn't really have uh, any motivation to be upgrading um, to the 8805. I kind of shelved the idea, I didn't think too much of it when it had come out because really the other one was about five, six months old. And I've actually had a few people comment on the site asking me, you know, hey, do you think you're going to upgrade? And frankly, from what I heard, no, I didn't think it was worthwhile. That being said, there are a couple of key features on this thing that, uh, that really sort of inspired me to want to wanna pick it up. Um, and we'll get to discussing that shortly. Um, much like last year, picked this guy up at uh, Gibby's Electronics, um, picked it up for a hell of a deal, uh, got another B-Stock unit, and saved a ton of cash. So if you guys are in Canada and you're looking for AV stuff, I highly, highly recommend Gibby's Electronics. Um, <laughs> I'm not getting like ad revenue from them or anything, just I happen to fluke upon them uh, based on Amazon, and I've bought you know a couple of amplifiers from them now as well as... Uh, a couple of uh, receivers or pre-pros. So anyways, okay, so let's crack this guy open. Um, it just came today. Um, I actually pre-ordered this um, from them, which was kind of weird. Um, back in, ugh, let me cut through here. Back in August, um, it was the first week of August, and I've actually sort of promised a few of you on, uh, on YouTube that I'd you know, have information come in about it when I got here. Little did I know it was gonna, take so freaking long to arrive. So I, I kind of knew going in that they can't really, um, they can't promise when it's going to come in. And that's one of the problems with uh, B-Stock. So B-Stock, they'll, you know, tell you that, uh, you know, we can see one in the supply chain. And if you want to pre-order it, you can, but we really don't know. It could come in next week. It could come in, you know, three months from now. And that's sort of my situation here. So I pre-ordered this guy um, back in, in August and I was moments away from canceling it. Um, I sort of said, you know what, I'm giving it until October. Um, you know, we're going on almost three months now since I put in the order. So if, uh, if it hasn't come in, you know, sort of within the next week, then that's it, I'm canceling it. So I contacted them uh, actually this, uh, this past week on Thursday and said, you know what, I'm, I want to cancel my order, um, I'll look at getting one next year. You know, like I honestly, I don't need this thing as, as, as a rule because the other one is doing everything that I need. So ultimately, um, this was kind of a nice to have, not a need to have. So the morning that I sent that into them, um, I get a message back saying, actually, this thing just arrived and we're going to be shipping it to you today. So kind of, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, the universe stepped in and said, nope, you need to have one of these. And um, <laughs> the rest is history. So here it is. Um, so this, this unit has a couple of features that I, I was very interested in um, and what ultimately made me pull the trigger on it. Um, number one, we've got more channels being added this time around. So the last one had uh, had 11 uh, 11 point2 for sound. So 11 surround channel or 11 channels plus surround and two subwoofer channels. This time around, they've upped the game. Let me just put that down. They've upped the game here and now they've gone with a full hookup for 15.2 channels. So across the back here, hopefully you'll be, guys will be able to see, across the back here, whole bottom row, um, this does everything now. So you've got your front, you know, your center, your surrounds, your, um, your rear channels, you've got four Atmos channels in the ceiling, you've got hookups for your wides and hookups for your heights. Now the only kicker is, unfortunately, um, you're only able to listen to 13 channels at once. So you, while you can hook up all 15, what it'll give you is the ability to switch back and forth um, if you want to go to wides or heights and you know take a couple of the, the ceiling ones out, whatever. Um, everything will be able to be hooked up all at once though. So 
um, with their DTS X, and I can't remember what the one for uh, Dolby is called. I can't remember what the sort of the emulated Atmos is that does more channels um, or, or takes sources and, and puts it into Atmos um, when it isn't. Um, so now you'll be able to get you know full 13 channel um, surround. So what it's ultimately meant for, for the most part, is having the two height speakers, four speakers, you know, above for Atmos, and then you know your seven. Uh, surround channels and then a couple of subs. So that is something that has changed in the theater in the, the last while. If you go to uh, compulsivecanadiangamer.com, we've added another just giant ass subwoofer downstairs. Um, the original PB, PB12 that I had, uh, PB12 Ultra that I had, um, well, great from SVS. Ever since I built this home theater uh, about five years ago, just the room is too big. The previous theater that I had, you know, it was uh, about 12 feet by 15 feet, perfect for that room. Um, now that I'm in a you know a uh, 15 by 25 foot room, not cut in the mustard anymore, and it hasn't since I moved in. So I'm kind of you know finally getting that rectified. Picked up a PB16 Ultra, and this thing will shake the dishes in the kitchen cabinet, much to the dismay of my wife right now. So we just watched Solo the other week, and yeah, I've never heard bass like that before. But that's I digress. So. Um, so what, like I say, one of the, the big deals about this guy is that you're able to, you know, hook up all of these channels now. Um, it's going to be a while before they find a, another place to squeeze in some speakers in the, in the theater. I know there's still stuff for Aura 3D where you can do like a Voice of God channel. Um, unfortunately, my ceiling is only like seven and a half feet high in the theater, so there's like no way I'm going to be able to, to do a Voice of God channel. Especially with, right where we sit, there's actually a bulkhead over top, so it's even less. It's only about five feet above my head. Um, so the other big thing for this, and I've got to test it out, it, it's a mixed bag. So uh, Marantz Denon um, have created an Odyssey app now. So there's an Odyssey equal a multi-EQ app that's available on Google Play and on the iTunes Store. So now when you go to do all of your calibration on this guy, you can do it through the app. You can still do it traditionally where you plug in the mic, you know, and all the on-screen prompts tell you everything to do and whatnot. Uh, but you can also do it through the app and, or sorry, through the app. And where that has a significant benefit this time around is you get to see all of your data. Now, one of the big problems with Odyssey that, that I've had is that it's just kind of magic. You hook up the mic, it does its thing, it calibrates your room. If you like it, great. If you don't, what are you going to do? Um, you don't really have that extra tweak ability. Um, with the app, now you do. Um, it shows you all of your curves, it shows you all the room correction, you can make changes on the fly. So if, you, you know, if you're finding that it's you know, bringing your highs down a little bit too much or it's, it's stifling your bass a little bit too much, which Odyssey has a tendency to do sometimes, um, it's, I, now you can get in and you can you know, tweak this sort of stuff. Now my beef with this is, for whatever reason, you know, this is a $6,000 receiver, 6,000 Canadian, um, that app's not free. So you go to the app store and in Canada it's $27.99 for the app. That's a lot of money. You know, like it's, when, when you think of most of the stuff that's on app stores and stuff, you know, you're looking at a buck ninety nine, maybe four ninety nine for, you know, a high-end game or something like that. But, you know, almost $30 for an app and after reading a bunch of the, the reviews and stuff, I haven't had a chance to test it out myself. I've, I've just installed it, just purchased it and installed it. But like the reviews, there's more negative reviews than positive. So at five stars, it's sitting there at 2.8 right now. Um, I guess a lot of people, you know, piss and moan about connectivity issues and stuff like that. Now I did take a look at the change logs and, you know, uh, Denon Morantz has been, you know, tweaking it almost monthly or, or every couple weeks. There's another version, another version that keeps coming out. So stability reason, stability uh, may have increased. Uh, the majority of those reviews, the, the really, really poor reviews, were from sort of March, April, May of this year, uh, a little bit into June, and then it kind of tapers off after that. So they may have got some of that connectivity stuff taken care of, I hope. Um, so other than, other than those two things, they've sort of added uh, some stuff for HEOS, um, you know, to tie in, you know, directly with Alexa and stuff like that. Um, you know, that functionality is in here. I'm not a fan at all. Um, I haven't really talked about this on, on my site or, or whatnot or on YouTube here. Um, not a big fan of things like Alexa and, you know, Google Home and, and these tied in things. Um, I'm not a paranoid guy, but at the end of the day, 
I don't think having an open mic on the internet is really a smart thing to do. Um, so great, this thing will tie into these, you know, other pieces of, uh, of equipment. I'm never going to test it. I'm never buying an Alexa. I'm never buying Google Home, anything like that. I just, you know, I refuse to put that in, you know, into my house and just out there in the world. You know, in this, I'm an IT guy. Um, and in this, this day and age where people are constantly trying to find ways to, you know, get your information and to hack your, your personal information, steal your personal information and, and to get your stuff. It just doesn't seem like a really smart idea to me to put one of these things in your house and leave it on. So, but that's just me. Um, that's not, that's not what we're here to discuss. If, if that's how you want to run your system, you know, good on you. If you want to talk to it, tell it to play music, you know, that, that's fantastic. Um, I think it's a really cool feature. I just hate that, you know, unfortunately it ties to a piece of technology I don't agree with. Um, other than that, the device is pretty much the same. Um, a lot of the same uh, guts that are sitting in the 8802 right now. Um, I'm not expecting there to be a big sonic improvement. Um, I've read some other reviewer sites and stuff and, and the, you can expect a bit of an improvement and I think the majority of it's going to come from like the tweaking that you're going to be doing in the app and stuff like that. But you know, like for, for the, the, the same level of, of uh, just of sound quality you're not getting a big jump here. So, you know, if you've got an 8802 now, uh, or 8802 a I should say, uh, if you got one of those now, you're really gonna have to weigh whether or not it's worth it. If you're not using um, all of the channels that you have available, like if you don't have 15 speakers, uh, honestly, I think it might be, you know, not worth updating. Um, if you're a real tweaker and you wanna use the app and you wanna, you know, like you're one of those guys who likes to just, you know, dick around with settings, then you might find some benefit from this. But again, it's a lot of money. Um, so like I say, retails in Canada for $6,000 before tax. So, you know, like you're pushing almost $7,000 for this. Um, and if you've already got something that does like 90% of what this does, I don't know if I can necessarily recommend it. Um, it's, what else does it do? Uh, in terms of 4K, uh, it does 444 pass through, um, which is pretty fantastic. Um, if you've got a source that you can put that out with, that's great. Um, the projector I have, the, the JVC, um, it'll go, you know, 444, no problem. So, you know, I've, I'm kind of excited about that. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's, uh, it's practically the same unit, um, you know, looking at it. Um, that's why I'm always a little bit disappointed because I, I had an 8801 and then I got the 8802A and then, you know, this guy. And every time I put it into the audio rack, it doesn't even look like a new piece of equipment. Um, so Marantz just, you know, they keep slapping the same front on it, you know, like everything about it just screams, hey, I look just like the last one. Um, there is one other benefit that, uh, that this guy has that the uh, previous version doesn't. And it's not here yet, but Marantz has promised that there will be an update to the new HDMI 2.1 format. So you will be able to swap out the board that does your HDMI connections in here. Now, the way that it's worked in the past, and, and I presume it'll be the same thing this time around, it's a few hundred bucks. Um, you take the unit, you send it back to Marantz, they bring it in, they swap the card out, and ship the unit back out to you. Um, you can actually see, like sort of through the grill here, all of your HDMI ports are at the top, and you can actually see the main board that they're connected to in here. So it's probably a really easy fix for them. You know, take it out, a couple of ribbon cable and cables, put the new one in. So that, they've promised, is gonna be available sometime 2019. Now, considering there's nothing on the market that takes it yet, I can't say that I'm actually excited about getting it done. Um, I'll probably sit on it like, this unit I upgraded a year after I upgraded the other one. So um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to go out and, you know, pay that money until I have something I can plug it into. Um, and projector, I'm more than satisfied with the JVC that I have right now. So that being said, highly unlikely um, that I'm going to be getting this update done unless I buy a new projector. That'll be the catalyst for the update because, you know, nothing, nothing else uses it. So, you know, as we sort of start to march into the advent of, um, you know, 8K and stuff like that, um, that's great. You know, you're going to have a few TVs that are starting to, to support that. But, you know, like we're, we're probably three, four years away before we're starting to see it in projectors that are affordable to the average consumer. Um, my last projector was like seven grand, which is like a, 
above what the average guy is paying for their home theater. So, you know, and, and the step up from here is like going to, you know, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars for, you know, some of the Sony true 4K projectors and, and stuff like that, and the new ones that are coming from JVC. And they don't even have, you know, HDMI 2.1 in them. So right now it, it's nice to have, it's nice to know that Marantz is thinking future-proof, um, which gives me peace of mind because this time around I'd really like to have this freaking thing for like five or six years instead of, you know, this, this is actually my third unit in five years. So uh, for a guy who doesn't upgrade AV very often, um, unfortunately I'm upgrading AV all the freaking time. So yeah, that's about it for, uh, for this guy. Um, look probably within the next month. I'm not going to give a hard timeline. Um, I've got to, you know, install this. I've got some rewiring that needs to be done. Um, since I added my Atmos channels, I actually um, had my wides and my heights unplugged. Um, so something that you, you guys didn't get to see is this guy was also purchased with, uh, with an 8055, um, or sorry, 8077, um, which is the uh, seven channel Marantz amp. So I pulled one of my old five channel Rotel devices out, put that in, that gives me the ability to hook up the rest of the channels. Um, so now I've got, a, got two five channels and a seven channel. Uh, sitting in my rack right now, so I'm kind of good for an extra two channels if necessary, so I can do 17 now, but um, So as it stands um, I'll be getting this guy installed and it could be uh, a month before I get everything tweaked with Odyssey I'm just gonna do a, a base calibration as soon as it's down there, but you know playing with it I want to give you guys an honest opinion on it. Um, I, I'm still uh, an avid gamer, so um, uh, you know, I test these sort of things out for uh, input lag and stuff like that, which if you've read most of my other things, I think input lag is bullshit, but um, I'll at least let you know if, if this has any, you know, sort of impact in the system because uh, so far the, the last one hasn't. I don't expect this one to either. So, all right, that's about it. I don't know how long I've rambled on for, but uh, probably too long. So um, if you guys uh, want the review on this, it won't be done via YouTube. It'll be on my site, Compulsive Canadian Ga the thecompulsivecanadiangamer.com. So tune in there. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook. Uh, we're on Instagram now. Just, you know, uh, a lot of game screenshots and, you know, stuff that I'm playing right now. As well as uh, look up Compulsive Canadian Gamer on Twitch. Um, I've started streaming there, so um, if you want, I'm not like one of those annoying ass streamers who like has a kitschy little thing. Um, I don't have a camera, I don't have a microphone, so when I'm playing online, you will have absolute silence and you can just watch whatever the hell I'm playing. So if you want to see like you know the better part of uh, Assassin's Creed audience, uh, Odyssey, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey without having you know some guy rambling on like crazy, um, tune in. Watch the story and uh, check us out. All right, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Peace out.